Okay, hello everyone. Um, as you can see, uh, this is already one of the problems that I have shown in class. Um, basically, the problem says that you have a closed tank and it contains compressed air and oil. And the, the specific gravity of oil is given to be 0 0.90. And you have a YouTube manometer using mercury with a given specific gravity also in the problem. And it is connected to the tank as shown in the figure below. So the columns are given uh, height 1. As you can see here, this one here is 36 inches. Height 2 is in 6 inches. And height 3 is in 9 inches. Now for this problem, we will be dealing with as a unit. So you have to convert uh, the given of the problem. But we have to simply recall this one that the... I'm hoping this will be easy to recall for you. The specific gravity is basically just um, equal to the density of your fluid divided by the density of the reference fluid, which uh, most of the time is basically just water at 4 degrees. So that means to say that um, in this problem, the specific gravity of oil is given to be uh, 0 0.90. And when you do that, that is just equal to the density of your oil uh, divided by the density of water at 4 degrees Celsius. So that equation implies then that you can actually get the density of the oil just by rearranging your equation. To get uh, the density of the oil is just 0 0.90 of the density of water at 4 degrees Celsius. Okay, so you do the same for mercury. Now maybe I will just uh, make this uh, fast, maybe like loop this in a fast manner for mercury but i'm just gonna um, do it here 13.6 <clears throat> that is just equal to the density of mercury divided by your reference fluid which is water so again basically following the same logic above that implies that the density of your mercury is just equal to 13.6 uh, of the density of water okay now I will not no longer uh, show the conversion of the following uh, units of height here. You have uh, 36 inches, 6 inches, and 9 inches. What I would rather say is that uh, 1 inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters and 1 meter is equal to 100 centimeters. So you do the conversion and once you do the conversion, you will get this value that H1. In terms of meter, because it is a uh, straightforward conversion, you will get 0 0.9144 meters. Height 2, which is 6 inches, that is just equivalent to 0 0.15. So it's 0 0.1524 meters. And your height number 3, or H sub 3, is just 0 0.28, uh, no, sorry, it's 0 0.22 eight six meters so you have there all your heights already in meters because we will be dealing as i've said with us a units now um let's basically just set up the equation for this one so if you are confused uh i guess it's not stated in the problem but basically we are looking for the gauge pressure here at this point i will call this my point a and that is the pressure that we are looking for in that um, section there so uh, as you remember in class basically uh, this fluid just a sort of uh, background this fluid as you can see the oil as well as the water here are actually in static condition so it's not moving which implies that whatever force that is due to the pressure at this portion of the fluid here that is trying to push that water equalizes with the pressure of the atmosphere here such that the summation of the forces due to the pressures at these different levels basically set the system in equilibrium. So there is no relative motion because, again, this is a problem of fluid static. Fluid statics. Okay, so when we do that, I'm hoping you recall from our class that we basically just add up all the pressure. So firstly, we have the pressure here at the top that is P sub A. And you go down. So when you go down, you actually go down up until this level here. So I'm just going to shift the arrow from this point over here. You have that level there. You add up the pressure going down. 
And basically, we learn from our discussion that whenever we go down, the pressure increases in a column of fluid. So that's why we add pressure. And the pressure will just be given as the density. What is that fluid? That is oil multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity and the height of that fluid. Now, take note, the height of the oil layer here is actually H1 and H2. So that's why your height here will just be H1 plus H2. Okay, I'm hoping that is clear. And another thing is um, you might think that, okay, I'll just go on with adding. So I'm, I'm going to add this pressure over here. So this will be another pressure, as you note uh, in the illustration. But you need to be wise in terms of your solution upon realizing that actually when you add pressure going down, when you add up this pressure over here, you have the same fluid, the same height that will just basically just cancel out. So if you are moving across a fluid, assuming that they are the same fluid, what you are going to do should be like this. And this is something that I already mentioned in class. You just take the water level or the fluid level in that case and you start from there. Because basically, you try to take note of this one. The addition of pressure as you go down here will just be cancelled out by the pressure going up here. So do not concern yourself anymore with that complication. But rather, I would suggest that you start from point 2, this one in red, going up. So since we are now going up, I'm just going to change the color from this to this one. The pressure will essentially decrease, right? So when it decreases, you add a pressure, but the pressure will bear a negative sign indicating a decrease in pressure. So you have negative the, the density of that fluid there, that is mercury, Hg, multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity and the height. Basically, the height here is just your H3 because that is the, the height of the fluid column mercury. So that's H3. And then, um, so I'm just going to use proper grouping symbols. And from there, you go up to the atmospheric pressure. So you go up, you add again the reduction in the atmospheric pressure, P atm. And that is just set to zero. But then again, uh, another side note, if you remember, when we are measuring gauge pressure, let's say P gauge, this is actually just your excess above the atmospheric pressure. The atmospheric pressure. So that means to say that in problems such as um, finding for the gauge pressure, we set the P atm to be equal to zero since we are concerned with the gauge. So this term here will just become zero. Okay, so working with this equation uh, over there, as you can see, we are going to simplify. And um, as you will see, uh, we'll, we'll get some some uh, expression for the specific gravity. So after that one, you just have P sub A plus the density of oil multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity and height 1 plus height 2 of the oil. And then minus the density of your mercury multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity. And then you have H3. Is it like H3? Yeah, it's H3 and that is just equal to 0. Now from there, uh, you need to recall also, this is one of the things that I should have mentioned earlier. You need to recall that your specific gravity, which is denoted by the symbol, is just equal to rho times G. So this is something that we already discussed in class or that is just uh, weight per given volume. Uh, no, no, sorry, not specific gravity, but these, uh, what do you call this one? This is the lambda, specific weight, right? But probably in this problem, you're not going to use that, so never mind, I'm, I'm blubbering. <laughs> so let's go back here, uh, working with this equation. Basically, what we are finding for or looking for is your P sub A, which is the gauge pressure. Now, uh, continuing with that one, we have here um, P sub A which is what we want, I would like to isolate that in one side of the equation. So I will throw everything or transpose everything to the other side, starting with this term here because this has the negative and I want to start my expression with positive sign. So that I will transfer first rho, sorry. Okay. Okay. Equal to um, the density of mercury multiplied by G. I have H3. And then I will subtract this term over here. So minus the density of oil multiplied by G H1 plus H2. 
So, since I basically just want to get PA, this is already a good direction towards that solution because I have isolated P sub A. So, plus one point for that. So, let's go to the substitution of our values. Now, as you can see here, um, the raw times G is actually just your, uh, sorry, raw times G, yeah. If you try to look here, and I'm just going to re-express that one. That means the density of oil is equal to 0 0.90 of the density of water. So from there, your density of mercury will just be written as, how, what do you think? So that will be just written as the uh, specific gravity, Sg, multiplied by the density of water. So why did you get that expression? Basically, this is just coming from this term here that I am writing, um, underlining. So if you get the from the equation of the specific gravity, uh, you can get the density of your specific fluid, in this case, oil and mercury, by just manipulating that one. So this is actually just your Sg, and this one here is the density of water. That is why for the density of mercury, this term here will just be re-expressed as Sg times the density of water. Okay, so you're just going to copy this one and do the same thing for oil. So for oil, you have Sg, but just to be specific, this is the specific gravity of oil multiplied by the density of water and uh, G and then height 1 plus height 2. Okay. So from there, uh, you can basically just substitute the values. The specific gravity of mercury is given to be 13.6. And that is a dimensionless number. No unit multiplied by the density of water at 4 degrees Celsius. You could just approximate it into this very beautiful number, just 1,000 kilogram per cubic meter, multiplied by 9.8 meters per square second. And then you multiply it by H3. So your H3 in this case uh, is just given to be, where is it? 0 0.2286. So you write 0 0.2286 meters. And then you subtract it by the specific, we are now in this part of the equation. These, the term Sg of oil is given in the problem as 0 0.60, am I right? Oh no, sorry, 0 0.90. It's 0 0.90 multiplied by the density of water at 1,000 kilogram per cubic meters. The acceleration due to gravity on Earth is 9.8 meters per square seconds. And then you multiply it by H1 plus H2. So your H1, as you can see here, is 0 0.9144 9 meters. And then you add H2, which is just 0 0.15. 24. So basically, the, the, the physics there is just the concept and the analysis of whether this fluid, I mean, this pressure acts on which height and which, which fluid, and the rest is basically just an algebraic manipulation. Okay, so when we try to deal with this one, um, maybe we'll just try to look at the units because I always emphasize the units as a means of checking whether we are dealing with the correct number or correct uh, solution. So firstly, if you take this one, this will be meters times meters, so that's m squared. And then you divide it by m cubed, so that means that you will only be left with m to the 1, or just m. The same case happens here. Meters times meters will be m squared, because this whole term will just result to meters. And then um, divided by m cubed, so you are just left with m to the 1. Okay. So when you try to do your calculation over there, I just get your calculator. You should be able to get 30,467.808 and the units will be in kilograms per meter second squared. Now probably, uh, no, no, sorry. This is for the first term. This is just for the first term over here. And for the second term, that will be this one, this term over here. This all results to this uh, number. 9,409 uh, is that, yeah, 0.176 kilograms per meter second squared. Now, as you can see there, uh, we can simply like calculate it again, and that will give us 21,000. 
0.058.632 kilogram per meter second squared. Now, probably you're anxious why, oh my God, you're getting kilograms per meters over meter second squared, but take note that this is pressure, so at least in SI, you should be able to get pascals. But fear not, as you will see, this is just pascal in another form. 0.632 pascals. So this is the gauge pressure. Okay, so this is basically just the gauge pressure or the pressure that is read in this portion of the fluid. Okay, or in that portion of the system where there is an air and oil bound, uh, uh, air and oil system on your tank. Now, uh, as, as I was saying, uh, probably you're wondering why, how come kilogram per meter second squared becomes Pascal. So you need to remember that your one Pascal is actually just equal to one Newton force divided by a uh, square meter in SI units. And you need to recall also that 1 Newton is basically the force that is required to accelerate 1 kilogram into 1 meter per second squared. So that's why you have that equivalent, um, what's this, units there. Now your m squared will just be m squared. So as you can see there, it's very clear that from the numerator terms, that 1 will cancel out, leaving behind m sub 1. So that means to say that when you further simplify that one, you get kilogram over meter second squared. So this is telling you that this term that you are seeing kilogram over meters second squared is actually just Pascal in a different form or in a different unit. Okay, so this is the solution for the first problem. We have a second problem. Um, just check the second problem. Problem two, this one.